the Doug Gottlieb Show. It's Fox Sports Radio. Fill out your tournament brackets right now. The bracket challenge is underway. Visit foxsportsradio.com to register. Fill out your bracket. Get rules. Compete against Fox Sports Radio's hosts, fellow listeners, to see who has the best bracket. The winning bracket wins the ultimate college sports trip for you and a friend with a $2,000 uh, graduate hotels gift card and a $1,500 travel credit and a basketball swag bag. The FoxSportsRadio.com Bracket Challenge is now live and it's presented by Graduate Hotels where college fans stay and by Tractor Supply. Yesterday was the NCAA Selection Committee's day, right? It's anybody who loves college hoops or just likes the bracket. It's your personal Christmas. Now you're looking at your bracket like, Gottlieb, just give me a winner. Shut the hell up. I don't care about the other stuff. I'll do that for you. We may even wake, work in a phone call or two. Why would you take a phone call? I, don't know. I want winners. You want winners? I'll I want me. people that want to win. Yes! But um, I, I, I think there's this thing that we don't realize in sports, okay? Is we have this thing in sports about feel versus data. Feel versus data. And, you know, I do believe that if I was on the selection committee, I could find the best teams. Because if you said, hey, this is your job, go out and watch teams play, take in all the data, talk to a bunch of people, you'll end up getting the best teams. Because I do think I have a basketball eye. I've seen everybody. I talk to everybody. But here's the big thing, and this has at times hurt me in my career, is that I try and carry no biases. Right? Try and carry no biases. Right? I remember when I was uh, I was working at CBS and we were doing the Patriot League. We're doing the Patriot League. And uh, the Patriot League's tournaments are at home sites. And I remember saying something along the lines of like, look, this is great. And the home sites, but I, I forget there were two teams that had the same record in the league and they were matching up in the Patriot league tournament. And I said, well, it's kind of unfair that you're using, you know, a home site when a team had the exact same record in a league where you play a double round Robin, you're using some sort of, uh, formula for who gets the home site when most of these tournaments are played neutral sites. It was just meant as a context, right? I get a call from somebody in the Patriot League commissioner's office and like, hey, just so you know, blah, 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 blah. And the crazy part about it was if you, if you listen to the 10 things I said about the Patriot League, nine of them were overwhelmingly positive. The only thing that could be taken as a slight negative was, man, this is a weird way to decide a championship when you have some distinct, unique home court advantages and two teams have the same record and one team has to play on the road. It's not even a negative. It's just more of a contextual thing. But the point was, hey, dude, we partner with CBS Sports. This is our one chance to be on TV. Why would you say anything perceived as a negative? And it struck me at that very moment. That this is why people can't be honest. And this is also why people have to have data to support decisions. Because otherwise their feelings, their ties, their emotions get way too involved. Right? Many of the people that cover the sport of college basketball, like me, grew up on Big East basketball. And there's a power in that brand. Power. Right? Big East is Big Monday. Stevie Thompson to Ronnie Cycli. Right? Sherman Douglas and Pat Ewing. Right? The little Chris Smith that played for UConn. You guys remember him? Right? Danielle Marshall. Villanova had, you know, the team in 88 that won the national championship. And then they had Kerry Kittles and Eric Ebers. And UConn had Ray Allen. And that's not the league that's playing now. Half the teams aren't even in the league anymore. And of the teams that are in the league, that were in the league back then, most of those aren't the good teams. 
Chris Mullen doesn't play for St. John's. So what happens is you get the emotion of people who grew up on Big East basketball, cover Big East basketball, watch tournament games played in Madison Square Garden, and like, man, this feels like all the stuff I've watched for the last 30 years. Like, man, a Big East team should be in the tournament, especially ahead of some team I've never heard of or never seen and not in my league. But this is a fight throughout all of sports. And I'm not sitting here su supporting all nerds, okay? But nerds have feelings too. And they got a point, which is the data cuts away the emotions. It's not flawless. It's not perfect. In the actual sport of basketball, data would tell you shoot threes, get layups, get to the free throw line, never take mid-range shots. But in the reality of basketball, the defense sets themselves to that. Sometimes that's the best shot you can get. The point is that you can't use data 100%, but if you do away with data and you just go by your feelings and your emotions, you're going to go with what you know the best, what you like the best, what you see the most, and when you see it. Eye test doesn't work because when did you watch the team? You pick a team and you're like, man, I saw him play this team. I'll, I'll give you an example. Seton Hall didn't make the NCAA tournament, right? And you'll get people going like, you know, they beat UConn. They did at home. Did you know like two weeks ago they got 30 pieced on national TV by them? When did you see Seton Hall play? Take your eye test and throw it completely out the window because the eye test is based upon I parachute in, I watch you play once, and I make a determination how good you are. So what do we do? Because the eye test doesn't work, because all the feelings and emotions lead us to if we like or grew up and want the Big East or love Shaheen Holloway, he's a contemporary of mine. Of course I like Shaheen Holloway. You remember him leading St. Peter's to the Sweet 16 and through their upsets and whatever, and you're like, man, Shaheen Holloway, he put, he, he's a giant slayer. But if you don't have those emotions, you go, yeah, probably not it. So my walk, my step away is, it's the same fight we see with NBA broadcasters. It's the same fight we see with the NFL where we're very scared of data because data may give us a, a, an answer that we're not comfortable with, that we didn't, we didn't come to on our own. Right? The data actually told you Indiana state should be in the tournament. That one aligned with many of our feelings. But it's a hard one to pull off because you look at them and their uniforms are different and they're what's it, Kareem Abdul Jabbar is the name of Robbie Avila, the center, right? Or Larry Nerd. And you don't want to get that emotion of like, man, I really like them and they're wearing Larry Bird's uniform, so we put them in the tournament. But the data, the net ratings, which basically takes in all that stuff, said they should be in this field. And why not? But even committee members are scared of all of the data, of going all in on data. So when I see the selection committee, one, it's an impossible job. I mean, let's just kind of be honest. Right? Impossible job. Because most of these teams are brand new from year to year with the current landscape of the sport. St. John's has 13 new players from last year. 13. Okay. 13 new players. And uh, with those 13 new players, with it comes the fact that they're going to grow and change and evolve and rotations or whatever. So if you're going to go by the whole body of work, man, it's hard to judge any team now based upon what they did in November. Right? On the other hand, if you simply go by now what they did the last 10, 15 games, well, what was November 4? What was December 4? Why do we play games against other leagues then? So you can get a gauge for who's really good and who's not good. The last thing is this. The most tedious, the most tedious commentary to me comes from teams that are in the field that don't like their seed. Right? They don't like their seed. It's tedious as hell. 
Why? It's like, man, I didn't get the wedding invite right away. Everybody else got invited, and then I got invited like a month later. Did you get invited to the wedding? Jimmy was having a party, and I just found out about it two or three days before the party. You knew about the party two weeks ago. Did you get invited to the party? And look, if you're disappointed at the timing of the invite or the style of the invite or the the letterhead that it's on or you just got in a text, that's fine. You don't have to go. I love the selectivity of it. Don't expand it. I like it when people are like mad that they didn't get in. That's awesome. That's awesome. The best clubs, the best bars, the best organizations, they cap the number and that's it. You, in order to make something special, you have to make it special. And I'm just telling you now that the reason that the, I'll give you an example. I think Jay Billis is awesome. I think he's really, really good at his job. But you know what his one flaw is? No, it's not because he can be super negative and a Debbie Downer. It's that in his heart, he's a dookie. He's a dookie. And his current, his current team that got robbed is Pittsburgh. It was coached by Jeff Capel. Jeff's a friend of mine. Okay? And, Jeff, and when Jeff got the job at Pittsburgh, I have a really, really close friend in Pittsburgh, who's a great dude. And, that, and when Jeff got the job, I texted him and I sent him a number and I was like, hey, you got to meet Josh. And he's like, why? And I said, because you guys are like each other. I, I know people. You guys are good people. You need somebody who's Pittsburgh, who, who will just be a friend unconditionally. And he's a basketball guy. And by the way, they are nearly, they are like best friends. I did that. I love that. I'm, it's like I was the, the matchmaker only for dudes, former hoopers coming together. Right? But Jay Billis is like, ah, non-conference doesn't matter. You lost to Missouri, who's the worst team in the SEC by a mile. You lost to Miami in league, who's the second worst team in the in the ACC by a mile. Right? You just didn't have the depth of wins. The ACC wasn't particularly good and NC State jumps up and wins the league tournament so they get in and you do not. Clemson was way better at a conference, right? You played like four, uh, four, five quality opponents out of your league. Florida, you lost by 15. Missouri, you lost by seven. Uh, West Virginia, who stinks, you beat by 17. And Oregon State, who stinks, you beat by 25. All right. You can't lose to Missouri. You got to be competitive with Florida. If not, you got to make up for it in your league. And you didn't. And the, the point is that the emotion of one, he covers, he lives in the ACC region. He knows Capel. He knows that league. He knows they won at Duke. He respects how hard it is to win at Duke, no matter if Duke's the best team in the world or just a good team. But it's really hard to cut out the fact that he loves, respects, admires his friend Jeff Capel and knows that Jeff has told him all the things his team went through and he didn't offer up a team that he wanted to take out of the field, only that Pittsburgh belonged in. The data tells you they shouldn't be in the field, right? Because the data doesn't have emotions that tie you to, hey, you played at my school, you're my friend, I think the world of you. Am I making sense? Again, and I'm not, and this is, people always say all the time, like, you should put coaches on the committee. No, you shouldn't. Do you know why? Because the coaches would all choose their friends and all pick against the guys that they hate. That's the reality to it. Right? How do I know that? Because most of us would do the exact same thing. Right? If we have to draft radio shows and radio people, right? You're going to pick the people that you like the most and not pick the people you don't like. Most people are. I feel like I'm the only, I don't want really to say honest man. Maybe I lack the empathy, but I just pick the best teams and I don't care. But I think that that idea is few and far between. And I would also rely on data.